episode 238 of the White Cat Outdoors podcast, bringing you to the table while we talk about the outdoors. Well, we got Frank back in studio this week, and for good reason. Frank just officially booked his uh, mule deer hunt for out west. He's going to be heading out in the peak of the rut for muleys with his rifle in hand, and uh, should be a great time. He's going on a uh, guided hunt out in Colorado, and should be pretty wild. He's pretty excited about it. So we're going to get the gist of his hunt and what he expects, what he's bringing for equipment. And uh, yeah, so Frank's pretty excited. We're all excited. Um, we hope you guys enjoy this episode and maybe it'll inspire you to book on this year. Um, but without further ado, let's get tuned in to this week's episode. And then I look dead at his antlers. I got out of the truck and when I slammed the door, I heard gobbles all around me. Alaska, moose, spot and sock. That is the bucket list. I agree. table me tom and nick are both all three not both all three of us are here yeah what's up yeah we're in the sauna yeah we are this place is great this is gonna have to be the new name for this place in the yeah. winter months i won't be here in the you winter, say months. winter months or summer months yeah that's true tom's gonna be uh mooching off the teat here soon mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm actually looking forward to that. it's gonna be fun be yeah like i'm gonna get a lot of, again i'm gonna get a lot of free labor yeah you are no. Well, yeah. We're going to have to set up the studio in your house then, or just That's hurry right. up and buy the barn, and we'll have a fucking sweet that, studio. That could happen. Oh, great. Now you just let everybody know where Nick's house is. Buy a barn? Yeah. There, there's no other barns around. Milk House Studios coming to you soon. Yeah. Sounds a little bit gay when you say it out loud, but... Hey. That was like your one uh, coyote hunting name that you came up with for us. I don't remember what Midnight it, Beast Busters? I, yeah, that's pretty gay. It sounded really cool, like when you read it over a text. It like, did. Oh man, we Austin said it out loud the one night while we were hunting. We're like, okay, we're never <laughs> saying that said, again. New name, new name. <laughs> All, you just had to say it out loud once. You're like, nah, can't believe we missed that. But uh, anyways, we have speak, some. Oh. On. So speaking of saying names out loud and realizing they're really bad, um, do you guys remember the movie The Karate Kid? Yeah. So there's a Netflix series now called Cobra Kai, yes. which, which is literally the same actors as they, they grew up. Awesome thing. Well, there's like this whole thing I don't want to get into in case you're interested in watching because it's actually a really good show. Um, really? It looked kind of lame because I see it on Netflix oh, all it's the cool. time. I it's, never watched it, but I'm like... Like there's pretty... flashbacks to the Karate Kid movie and everything. Like it's really? pretty cool. Um, but anyway, they were talking about naming their studio um, Cobra Kai Karate, but spelling the Cobra with a K... And then he said it out loud, and he was like, no, no, okay. And this is just like, same yeah. same thing, but worse. That's hilarious. Sounds like a good show. It, it's really good. <laughs> Subtle hints of racism are always hilarious. Well, no, it was once they realized it was racist, they said, no, this can't be. So, yeah, it was good. Not racist. For sure <laughs> not racist. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> We're here. This is episode's just getting tanked already. <laughs> So anyway, Frank booked a mule deer hunt. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so uh, let's hear a little bit about it. Where are you going? Well, no, let's, how did this happen? How oh, did this yeah. opportunity come up? You're jumping stories here. So uh, there's a local guy. He lives um, in Cambridge. Uh, I've known Me and Dad have known him for a long time. He owns a business in, uh, in Cambridge. And... We've known he's done elk and mule deer hunts out west for. When you say long. done them, like he's gone and hunted himself, or he's a guide. No, he's a guide. Okay. Yeah. Um, he doesn't own the outfit, but he kind of. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say he runs it. You know, it's. He's he, a boss. Yeah, he kind of. 
he gets a lot of hunts for the outfit and um, kind of. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It has a, a little, quite a, a big hand in running the show. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we've been talking to him for, I think, like three years now. Three years ago, we first talked to him and we're like, hey, we kind of want to do a mule deer hunt. And he's always super booked, really busy. So he's like, yeah, probably not going to happen this year, but next year, yeah, it'll be good. So then we put in for our tags and. He was like, you know what, guys, I'm probably not going to have room for you again this year. So it was Keep looking your points like, and yeah, it was looking like it was a sure thing last year, and ended up not going through. So didn't go on the hunt. And then he got a hold of us this year, and he said, "Hey, for sure, hell or high water, you guys are in for this year. You're coming. So make your plans, book your flights, and you're in." So we went over and signed the contract with him the other day, and we're locked in for peak mule deer rut end of october beginning in november so that's also peak whitetail rut here in our home state of pa yeah when i first brought it up to tom the other day he was like whoa you're about to miss the rut i was like well i mean you're not i'm not gonna miss it but i'm the white tail white tail rut but i would much rather shoot a mule deer than another white tail um are you interested in letting me hunt your stands while you're gone (laughs) i was gonna say disclosing what state you're going to uh he actually lives in wyoming right on the border like if you look out his front door you're looking into colorado if you look in his backyard he it's wyoming that's cool um so all the hunting we're going to be doing is in colorado gotcha we don't do anything in wyoming it's all colorado cool but we're staying in wyoming so you're a colorado guy you're not big into the Colorado. Yeah, I'm a Colorado. I'm a. I I'm the, Colorado. What are you? Colorado. You're, you're a Rado guy. Really? Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Depends on like if I'm talking about a truck, you know, like because I have a. Colorado. That's a Rado. Yeah, I say Colorado for that because of that one video years ago. But yeah, if I'm talking about the state, Colorado. It is pretty rad state. It is rad. They got all kinds of stuff to hunt. Elk, mule deer. That it's Colorado reminds me a lot of like kind of Montana when it comes to like the diverse diversity of game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they have antelope. They have mountain goats. Literally anything in North well, America. There's moose. And when I think of that state, I think of just straight mountains. But they also have plains and mm-hmm. stuff. So it's like you get a little bit of both. Yeah, and Montana's the same way. Mm-hmm. So what's uh, Obviously, this is probably your first Western hunt, not including Alaska or Nebraska, but like guided. Well, I mean, Nebraska's only. Okay, I guess you've been. That wasn't like a guided hunt, was it? No, that was a DIY hunt. And that is not terribly far because we were all the way up in northwest Nebraska. Mm -hmm. We were almost to Wyoming and Colorado. Mm -hmm. So we're not terribly far. You know, gotcha. several hours from there, but it's not ridiculously far. In the grand scheme there. of the world, you're like just yeah, a little it's bit just over. just like an inch or so. A little off topic, but I just remember some of the pictures you sent me when you were hunting in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. You ever think about going there in the spring for a gobbler hunt? Oh, man. I When I was out there, there were Miriams everywhere. I Every morning, I would see a flock of 100 of them. Different, you know, six different spots that we went. Every morning, I'd see a flock of 100 Miriams. So we could totally go to the same property that I hunted out there and I got waypoints and stuff everywhere. We could totally go out and do a DIY turkey hunt. I would like that. I want to marry him. Yeah, we could do it. Anyway, back like to Mule so Deer. so much. Why don't you marry him? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke, Nick. That's, we should get that on a T-shirt when we get out there. <laughs> we should. That, yeah. That's actually... Well, if you like turkey hunts so much, why don't you marry him? And then, boom. Boom. Put it on a T-shirt. All right. If that happens, people can come back here. This was this our what, idea first. Yeah. Yeah. So I would be totally into that because I it is pretty out there. It's a there's a where we were at is a lot of open fields, and then as soon as you get in the woods, deep valleys. So. So you know where the birds are roosting. Yeah. So. It'd be pretty sweet. I'd be all about it. And like I said, I already got all the waypoints and everything. And you can camp on that property. Like, we could go set up a tent and stay there. Yeah, kind of like Maryland. Yeah, exactly. That'd be cool. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so back to your mule deer hunt. Is this a rifle hunt? A, yes, rifle hunt. The, what are you taking out? Six point five uh, Creedmoor. No, that's <laughs> funny. The guy we went when we went over to sign our contracts the other day. He asked what we were hunting with. He's like, I don't fucking get people and they're fucking six five Creedmoors. Everyone wants to hunt with a six five Creedmoor anymore. And he was just you're just like tucking it shit. back into the gun case. Well, I don't own one. I know. I'm just, kidding. <laughs> and yeah, he was just going off about. It. He's like, what, what are you bringing? Don't tell me it's a six five. I was like, no, I'm not bringing a six five. What? Why is like the six point five Creedmoor? It's the, not that it's, it's the nickelback of hunting rifles. No, it's not the nickelback of hunting. Certain people, people just love to hate it, and people love like that's the new rifle that everyone wants to buy. I feel like, but there's a also a big group of people that shit on them. It's, it's because mostly like outfitters and people that are experienced hunters that don't like them. Oh, it's because my... they see a lot of wounded animals from them, and I don't think that's because of the cartridge. I think it's because it's the new craze of gun to buy. So everyone that is new to the to hunting or new to shooting, they're like, oh, everyone's talking about a six five Creedmoor, so they buy one and they don't know what the fuck they're doing with it. Used to be the thirty out six, like everybody just. Yeah, that's what it was. But I think it has something to do with like, a, and I'm not drawing a parallel like as in, if you do this, you have these kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But like, people that wear Sitka, they think that they are better than everybody, and that and all they talk about is why Sitka is so much better than any other product. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of hunters that buy a 6.5 Creedmoor like to sit at deer camp and tell everybody why their gun's better than everybody else's. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why the the hatred starts. There's nothing wrong with a 6.5 Creedmoor. Yeah, if you um, run a 6.5 bullet through the lungs of an animal, it's going to die. I mean, t- you've got proven... Yeah, the they have a great ballistic coefficient. They're a very flat shooting gun. They're, there's nothing wrong with them, but I think it's just... I think I've One, been, the stigma. Two, the people that are... It, there's just a big influx of people buying them that don't know what they're doing. Like, I've never sat at camp and said that, like, I'm better for shooting a 7 m 8 but I've definitely heard talks of why the 6.5 Creedmoor is better. Yeah. But you guys, <laughs> if you've seen it, when the old 6.5 barks, oh, there's a dead dies. deer behind it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Every said, time. I, I have no no issues with the 6.5 Creedmoor. I, it's, I think, like you said, it, it's uh, uh, in flux because they're so popular there's a lot of them out there, and the more there's out there, the more instances you're going to see mm-hmm. of, like, wounded game, which percentage-wise, it's probably the same as every other gun, but it's just because there's so many more mm-hmm. out there. And I think, because, like like I said, like, every outfitter I know has nothing good to say about 6.5s because a lot of people that go on guided hunts, it's their first hunt. Like, we've had people up in Alaska that they bought this gun to go on this hunt. Mm. And people do that for and they're not mule comfortable deer and elk hunt. They're like, oh, people are saying 6.5s are good. I'm going to buy this gun. I've never hunted before. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to shoot out. it three times, and then I'm taking it on a hunt. Yeah, so that's what you have. Those are the 6.5 people that are bringing that gun into camp. And no kidding, they're going to wound deer with it or whatever they're shooting because... Yeah. You can put any gun you want in their hand. They're going to do it's the like same thing. White Goodman's in there, and we're better than you. We and know we it. know it. Yeah. it's. I feel like that's the, the stigma that they give off. Yeah. And clearly they're not. So I know. Like, I've <laughs> killed probably, <laughs> conservatively, a dozen deer with mine. Of those dozen, I think six dropped right where they were standing. Five didn't make it 20 yards. And the furthest one I ever made it was that doe I got, mm-hmm. and it went what, seventy. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe eighty, maybe eighty. Probably yeah, more like seventy. Probably like ninety. <laughs> and that was with the top of its heart gone. I don't know how it mm-hmm. did what it did, but all no, downhill. I, yeah, I don't, I don't. Your dad said it best. He said it multiple times um, that it's not the gun, it's the cartridge, mm-hmm. and, and that's what it boils down to. You could have, you know whatever gun that they say is the best if you don't have the right bullet in there yeah it's not going to do well exactly um so to answer your question uh i plan on bringing my 338 out it's more than enough way more waste you guys the greatest talking. north american <laughs> cartridge are, ever no i, I think a 308 is the greatest I, north d- I knew that that was coming I, I, 338s I, are amazing, but I think a 308 is the most versatile i used to coyote hunt with a 338 <laughs> <laughs> why as it was available, hmm. yeah. That's... Ammo is easy to come by. <laughs> yeah, 
It's not cheap now, but you were probably getting it from your grandpa. Um, yeah, that's what I'm taking out because I love that gun. It's the same with your 6.5. When I shoot that, something is dying every single time. Um, I just bought a brand new Leopold scope with the CDS dial on it, and I'm very excited to use that. I've never used one of those scopes before. Um, so are you going to do some range time and practice oh, your sure. long distance shooting beforehand? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. How far would you like to get comfortable out to? I plan on practicing out to 500 before I go out there. I don't plan on shooting that far, but I want to know I can. I mean, if you're shooting a snuff can lid at 500 yards and you have an open shot at 500 yards, why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. I, I would do it if I had to, if I, was, if I knew I was proficient, but I don't plan to shoot for over 300. Speaking of loophole, um, did you see their new rangefinder they came out with? And I'm sure other companies are going to follow with this, but they have a new rangefinder that hooks up to, it's like partnered with Onyx. Oh, really? And you can hit something, say, 500 yards away, and it automatically puts a point on your map on Onyx what? of the location. That's so like if where you're standing, sweet. you can say you see, you know. Range a, something two hills over. Yeah, range it, hit it, and then it pins it on Onyx. That is slick. That is really cool. Yeah, especially like if you think about like say you shoot a buck in the morning, like I mean, yeah. I'm, even it's awesome for that kind of stuff. But as a whitetail hunter, you can be in your stand and you're like, okay, I know for a fact it went. I watched it go in by that tree, and you could pin that tree because yeah. every time, as soon as you get to the ground, everything looks different. Yeah, for um, sure. That's the biggest issue is when you're in a tree stand or like if you're out west and you shoot something. Once you start walking over to where you shot or where you yeah, last saw down something, over a mountain and stuff it's like what am i looking at now it's completely different you have yeah. no idea where you're at but if you can drop a point from way back there and you and know I'm it's sure accurate it's probably yeah it's going to be within 15 yards is which yeah which is what onyx i believe claims their mm -hmm. like property lines and stuff are so i would imagine their property lines are within i think 15 feet oh really but yeah. either way you're going to get a very close proximity yeah um to what you're dealing with like it's not going to be 80 yards off yeah um but I just I thought that was a really cool feature. Yeah, I, what's that called? Did you? I'll have to. I saved the link because I sent it to Austin. Yeah, thanks um, for sending it to me. I appreciate yeah. it. He's probably got it on order. I, yeah, I, probably, I only I he's sent it to sponsored by Onyx. They're just sending I sent it, it to him. Austin because of the Onyx feature. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, it's a very cool. And now that you're going on that hunt, can you turn that off though? Because like I I range find oh, a lot I'm of sure trees. I'm sure it's a I'm sure it's a button that you yeah. press to like. You send probably that have point. to hook it to your phone. Well, it's Bluetooth. Yeah, like, but I'm, I don't mean like oh. plug it in. I mean you have to pair yeah, it. This with isn't your, like 1980. Yeah, it's 2024. <laughs> it's like a big Bluetooth. satellite sticking at the top of your rangefinder. <laughs> uh, that would be wild. Would but be yeah, cool. so pretty neat little thing. I have no idea what it costs. It's probably a lot. Yeah, I'm sure it's um, not. I have a Leopold rangefinder, and I bought it for moose hunting because when you range something, it like puts brackets on it, mm -hmm. and it'll show like a measurement because I you know you have to you have can a program whatever. Hole whatever measurement you want mm -hmm. so if i wanted to measure 50 inches if i range something at 100 yards it'll put a bracket up on the screen that i can line up and say okay that's a 50 inch bowl or that's over a really 50 cool inch. feature yeah so and that one was i think 250 or something like that so honestly if if they could keep it under four i bet you that would be a, mm. a hot 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 item yeah because you think people will spend 700 on a site that range finds for them yeah so if you're i think if you were sub 500 i feel like they'll they're gonna fly off the shelves yeah for sure but i honestly have no idea what the price is i just saw it and was like i'm gonna have to look that up when i get home not that yeah. i'm gonna buy one but that's fucking cool yeah anyway um so what are your expectations for the hunt I took the words right out of my mouth well you took the words out of my mouth about rifle or archery so oh. uh my expectation i want to do a lot of walking you know, I want to... Sightseeing. It, it is, yeah. Yeah, who needs to hunt? I just want to go see some mountains. But uh, it is going to be a spot and stock hunt. There's... They do have a couple spots where, like, there's, like, some watering holes or stuff like that, and they have, yeah. like, shacks set up. But for the most part, you know, 95% of it, and I plan on making it 100%, is spot and stock. You're just going to go out, glass find an animal make a plan do you do you have a good spotting scope yeah and like a tripod or something mm -hmm. so you can because they said 
or like I, when I say they, I've just from the research I've done because I want to get on a Western hunt mm -hmm. bad. Um, and they said having good glass is like extremely oh. important because you're going to spend a lot of time behind that glass. Yeah, if you don't have good binoculars, you will find out quickly. You know, the way I look at it is, if you can't identify whether or not it's a shooter, it's six, seven hundred yards. It's not a shooter. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yep. What you're saying without glass? Yeah. Yeah. Bare, naked, naked eye. eye. All right. I want to be able to see rack at seven hundred plus. That's how you know it's a good buck. Yeah. That's not a bad benchmark, Tom. Just something to think about. Yep. I'll take that into consideration when I'm, before I pull my binoculars up. I, I won't pull them shoot up. Or shoot or shoot, or yeah, shoot or don't shoot or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, if you got a good enough scope, they, they say you can use your rifle. <laughs> that's not good advice. <laughs> As, yeah. Good thing this is a fictional podcast because yeah. that's terrible advice. Yeah. But my scope that I bought is a 15 power scope. Um, oh, that's plenty. Yeah. And my binos are ten power bin or ten power binoculars. So, so do you think you'll have some sort of sticks, or do you feel confident just laying your backpack on the ground and using that? I prefer to shoot prone like that. I don't like sitting on a tripod or standing on a tripod, but sometimes you have to. And I don't have a good tripod for that. Um, it's tough to find a good tripod for that style of hunt because mm -hmm. you're doing so much walking. Yeah, because you don't want to have to carry yeah. around like what you guys have for coyote hunting. It's I don't want to amazing walk for coyotes. Yeah, but I'm not going to carry that for eight miles walking around. Oh, absolutely. Glass and spot and stock, and I don't want that. You could. Yeah. So I will probably get something that I'm comfortable sitting with, and some, and then I'll just throw my backpack down and shoot prone because i'm very comfortable doing that I is that how you're going to practice at the range because i mean shooting off a, a vice a lead sled is totally different than yeah i mean i'll sight in on a lead sled <laughs> right but then yeah. i'll practice out of a sled so do you think you'll like just raw dog it or do you think you'll like do some physical training before the hunt uh, I'll probably just raw dog it. I mean, I'm in fairly decent shape. I might go for a little walk or something. Just, I might like put my pack together and go take a walk up and down the hill by my house or go to Mount Pleasant or something just to see what I'm feeling. So I don't know. Do you know what elevation you'll be at? I'm not sure. He didn't like, is give us any... how thin the air is? Is that a factor no. in this hunt or no? Well, you can't really prepare much for that here. I mean, you can increase your own cardiovascular yeah. uh, health, but once you get out there, if yeah. you're not, like, used to that altitude, you're going to tire quick. Yeah. Well, they have, like, well, those oxygen restrictors that a lot mm -hmm. of people use, but I, yeah. I, just, I, I don't know what the terrain is. It's not ridiculous. Are um, you going to raw dog the flight, too? No, I'm not going to raw dog the flight. I will have music. Mm. But, That's not how you get in the zone. Well, I'll... I'll try it for a little bit and I'll let Six you know hours, nothing but staring forward. Yeah. Nothing but the flight map. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing how close I am. Um, That's a wild trend. Yeah, I don't understand that trend. That's a pretty dumb trend. It's pretty I mean, popular. I've sat on planes with no music, but I don't just... And I, I, I always watch the flight map, but... Probably, I don't, I don't know, can you check your phone? You yeah. usually don't have I mean, Wi-Fi yeah. out there. I mean, huh. you can pull it out and look at it if you want. But... Yeah, none of that. Yep, it's still a phone. <laughs> Play games on it, yeah. what have you. No snacks, no drinks, nothing. I never eat or drink on a plane. I've never not had a drink on a plane. <laughs> They're fucking expensive. No, so here's this is why. Every time I've been on a plane, I've never had to pay for my drink. And I've only been on a plane four times. Um, but the first go-round through which accounts for half of my flights, the um, plane was so late taking off that they comped everybody on drinks. So got a free drink. On the way back, we were coming through, and their card reader wasn't working. So they comped everybody's drinks. That's nice. So I've never paid for a, a drink on a plane, but I've always had a drink, but it's <laughs> only been a couple flights. So Yeah, that is definitely not the norm. I've been on a shitload of flights, and... I've never had the card reader not working or anything of the sort. Mm. Um, and I've had very late flights or we've sat on the plane waiting to take off for an hour and never comped your drinks. Nope, never once. Hmm. Probably flying with Delta. 
I honestly have no idea who we flew. I have no idea. I've flown <laughs> with so many different airlines, and none of them have given me anything. Hmm. So what are your standards on this hunt? Uh, I would like to shoot a 170, and that's realistic out there. I mean, I'd, I'd love a 200, but that I don't... I've never seen... I've seen a lot of pictures from this outfit, and I've never seen anything approaching 200, so um, that is not in my realm of possibility in my head so i think 170 is very doable um and i don't plan on shooting anything below 150 and i i won't shoot a 150 first day you know it's not i want something hey don't pass anything up on the first day that you'd shoot on the last day i feel like it's one of those things where if you are hunting out there for like three days and you haven't seen anything really above like the 150 160 yeah it's like okay it's kind of looking like That's this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but I, I can get behind not dropping the first 150 you see. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's where my head is. And I definitely think 170 is very doable. I think with all the pictures I've seen and talking to the people that guide out there, I know a lot of the guys that guide for this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and 170 is a very doable animal. Your yeah. dad on the same page? Yeah. Yeah, we're both in the same. same so boat. you think if you do get one, you can get a shoulder mount? Oh yeah, I definitely plan on shoulder mounting it, even if it's a uh, one fifty on the last mm-hmm. day. Yep, that's still a nice animal. Yeah, I I don't know anything about mule deer. One fifty looks like a mule deer. It's not just a four corner. You know, it's it's got the actual shape of a mule deer. Nice. It's not a giant. But I it actually looks like a mule deer. I really like Andy's that he shot last year that looked like a whitetails rack yeah it has no forks but yeah there's no it nice looks like long a long time it looks like a giant whitetail like huge tines which is no brows yeah but there's no forks or anything mm-hmm. it just looks like the a huge frame of a whitetail mm-hmm. and they i've seen a lot of the pictures i've seen they get a lot of them like that out really there. yeah they get a lot is that of who they went forks. out there with yeah mm-hmm. yeah they've gone out there they're actually going out this year as well but they're going earlier during archery season nice Mm-hmm. very cool heck yeah um and we don't have to talk like specifics or anything but like is it a pretty like affordable way to go out west yeah yeah it's not ridiculous but i mean it, that's I one mean, of those it does things cost that, money but yeah and that's one of those things that the bigger animals that you want you know you're gonna pay more for different yeah areas. but it's, it's not like an alaskan and like once in a lifetime type. no of hunt. it's a very affordable hunt and, and then a lot of that's just how you prioritize your money and stuff. Yeah. But and I'm not sure what their elk hunts cost out there, uh, but they're not ridiculous. Very cool. Um, their mule deer hunts are very affordable. And, yeah, it's not anything crazy. It's not a once-in-a-lifetime gig. They have they have people. I mean, I shouldn't say they have people that go every year because we have people that go to Alaska every year. But That's a different class of people. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's strange. <laughs> But no, there's people that go out there every year that are like us. You know, it's a very affordable hunt. Very cool. Well, we're excited for you, White. Yeah, I'm I'm fucking pumped. I so, literally think about it every day. So that's what tells me is you're going to have to uh, get something with the stick and string in October. Yeah, early October we're going to have to get it done and then go out, shoot a muley with the rifle, be done with it. Yeah. That's the plan anyway. Sweet. And I guess when I come back, I could do a little bit more archery hunting, but it'll be about wrapped up by the time I get back from out west. So yeah. Tom, anything? You no, want to I'm with? about ready to wrap it up. I'm. Baking Is it like warm a, or something? Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up there. Frank, we're excited for you. We can't wait to hear how it goes. Yeah. Um, same. But we've still got our own stuff. We got to prep for. We got whitetail season coming up here, and just. Like a month and a half-ish? Yeah, a month and a half. Uh, two months. Two months, pretty much. October. Yeah. Oh, all, yeah, it's still of, July. I was thinking yeah, it was August already. I was thinking so, too. Uh, but like two months, so that's still plenty of time to get outside. 